Here are a couple of problems from section 7-3. It says to construct a confidence interval using the given confidence level, do whichever of the following is appropriate. We can either find a Z distribution, a T distribution, or state that neither normal nor T distribution applies. So before we move on to our problems, let's take a look at our selection process between the Z and the, D and the T distribution. If you notice, we have the following conditions on the left side of the table over here. We have a sigma unknown. Uh, we're going to use the student t distribution. Now it says here normally distributed or n is bigger than 30, but I underline the sigma is unknown because that's really what they have in common. So if your sigma is unknown, we're going to use the student t distribution. If sigma is known, and you have normally distributed population, or in this case n is equal to uh, n is bigger than 30. When your sigma is known, then you're going to use the normal distribution. This business about uh, population not being normally distributed and your n being less than 30, for that you're not going to be able to use a regular approach with the distributions and so you have to use some sort of non-parametric or bootstrapping method that we're not going to cover in this class so if that ever happens then you know you're not using it in this class so let's not worry too much about that uh, you can do some research on this if you want but I'll, I'll leave it at that so we're we only have two choices our two choices is that if sigma is unknown uh, we're going to use the student t distribution and the sigma is unknown we're going to use the z distribution by the way sigma is equal to the population standard deviation i want you to distinguish that from s which is the sample standard deviation and a lot of times your problem is going to be given s and if so you have to note that this is actually the sample standard deviation and does not equal a sigma and so if that happens when they give you S and they don't mention sigma or say anything about the population standard deviation, then you know that you're going to use a student T distribution. Okay, let's go to our first problem. We have a 99% confidence with N is equal to 100 and sigma is equal to 14. So clearly sigma is given and uh, it appears to be skewed so n is bigger than 100 here sigma is known so I think we're going to use a normal distribution for this the normal distribution has a shape and uh, it has a, a center at 0 and a standard deviation of 1 we have a 99 percent confidence so we have 99 percent confidence here and so our alpha is equal to the complement of 99%, which is 1%. So I'll write that as a decimal. And then the reason why they call it alpha over 2 is because that alpha of 1% gets split into two tails. So alpha over 2 is you just take half of that, 0 0.005. And then that's these little areas over here, 0 0.005. Okay? So let's use the calculator to find this. And in order to find this, we're going to use uh, our inverse norm function. So let me type up what we are going to put into our calculator first before we take our calculator out. So for this, we're going to use inverse norm. And then our inverse norm looks for the area on the left side. Now, this is really the critical value that we're looking for but if we find this critical value here since we know that this is symmetric one of them here is going to be a negative number the other one's going to be a positive number but it'll be the same number so um, let's take a look at this area to the left over here and that's 0 0.005 so we can actually type in 0 0.005 in our calculator or we can put our alpha 0 0.01 divided by 2 and then since we're looking for critical values, for critical values it's understood that the mean is 0, the standard deviation is 1. So we can put 0, 1 there, but we can just also close this and then we can get our values pretty quickly. Let's take our calculators out. 
Now let's look for inverse norm. So second function and distribution. And then the inverse norm is the third one. I'll select three. And then we'll type in uh, 0 0.005, or like I said, if you type in the alpha and then you divide it by two, you would get the same result. So this is going to end up being a negative number, negative 2.5758, and let's call that negative 2.576. And remember that since we're dealing with a critical value, we just take a look at the positive part. So let's just type that in. All right, so that's our critical value for the first one. Let's look at the second one over here. It says that we have a 98% confidence this time. N is equal to 25, so N is smaller than 30 in this case. But it says the population appears to be normally distributed. So let's go to this N is equal to unknown and then we have normally distributed so the size of being less than 30 is not going to matter because at least we see that the population appears to be normally distributed so here we'll use a student t distribution again we're going to start off with drawing a curve now the curve looks just like the normal distribution in fact it's the same shape except it's a little bit different and so the critical values will be slightly different so if I draw that same picture, instead uh, have a 98% confidence here instead of a 99, then our alpha is equal to 2% or 0.02, and then if you divide that by 2, alpha over 2 is going to equal to 0.01. So these little areas over here are 0.01, and uh, that's what we're going to put in our calculator. Oh, but we're looking for a T distribution, so we're going to use our inverse t distribution function in our calculators. So let's get this set up first. Our calculator command is inverse t, i, n, v, and then t. I have to say that this inverse t distribution is in the newer calculators, the TI-84s. So if you have an 83, you, you might get stuck having to use a table. Uh, but that's okay. We'll take a look at how to use a table. Let's take a look at the calculator version first and we have two things that we need to put in our inverse t function so I'm just gonna temporarily put the two parameters and the first parameter is area to the left so that's like the inverse norm area to the left but it takes a second parameter and the second parameter is the degrees of freedom so the degrees of freedom we have to identify that since we're using a t distribution here our n is equal to 25. Our degrees of freedom is going to be n minus 1, which is 24. So that's what we're going to put in our calculators for degrees of freedom. In fact, for this particular problem, let's actually keep that here because I think that's a good piece of information. So for this particular command, or for this particular problem, our area to the left is 0.01 and then we'll put a comma and our degrees of freedom is 24 so let's get our calculators out and try to find those values for our calculator command let's go back to second function and distribution and our inverse t is the fourth one so remember if you have an older calculator like a TI-83 you might not have this option in, this, in, in which case you would need to use the tables so we'll select this enter our first argument is 0 0.01 we'll put a comma and our second argument is 24 and then we'll close it and press enter and then we get negative 2.492 remember that we want our critical values to be always positive and with the symmetry in the in the curve that we drew we know that we can just put a positive number here so here's our critical value just to show you how to use the table in case like I said in case you have an 83 you might need to use the table let's actually pull out our table here's a table over here let's use the t distribution now everybody has the inverse norm so I'll, I'll address that a little bit later let's first take a look at the inverse t uh, function or replacement using a table and we have in two tails alpha is equal to 0.02. In one tail we have alpha is equal to 0.01. So what we need to do is we need to find the column that has that information. 
You can look at it in a one tail version of 0.01. See, 0.01 is right here, but also in two tails, so that's 0.02. So this is the column that we're going to want to look at. We're going to look at the column that we have based on your confidence level or your significance level alpha. And then the next thing to do is to take a look at the degrees of freedom. And our degrees of freedom is 24. So we have alpha is equal to 0 0.01, or if you split up, alpha is equal to 0 0.02 in two tails. This is our alpha. And so we take this all the way down to 24, and then we get this value 2.492. So that's what we found earlier. So that's that's the way to use a table. Uh, let's take a look at this table if we need to use our z distribution. Just to show you, this table is kind of handy to to get a, to get us the z distribution for common confidence levels. So we have a confidence level of 99%. We have uh, the area in uh, in two tails 0.01, or if we split that up into one tail each, it's 0.05. So one tail 0.05, uh, or in two tails is 0.01. Now, since we're looking for the z distribution, we can go all the way down to the bottom. And when you says z is large, you're actually, or our degrees of freedom is large, you're actually referring to the z distribution at this point. And so, looking at that first column, our z distribution value, our critical z value, is actually 2.576. And that is exactly what we found over here using our inverse norm. Okay, so just to show you, this table is handy for both the Z and T as long as you have these common uh, significance levels. Okay, so I hope that helps.